What's up guys? We are here to run the super popular Springfield Armory Hellcat. We're going to do a little bit of a review and shoot. Stick with us. America! What's up guys? We're gonna cover the Springfield Armory Hellcat. Here she is in a close-up. Uh, trying to get it cleaned up a little bit for you. As you may or may not know, this thing has been a very popular offering uh, recently with things like the P365 and then later, much more recently, we've gotten the Shield Plus. We also have videos for both of those if you wanna check them out. What we're gonna do is just do a quick uh, peek at this gun, see what comes in the box, and then we are going to shoot a little bit and see how we like it. So here is the box that it comes in. Pretty decent box, but I mean, you know, it's cardboard or whatever. Uh, it comes with this nice pouch here. You can use that to store it, I guess, in your closet or uh, in a purse or something, or, you know, wherever you wanna put the gun. Uh, this is how it comes. It comes with a little pinky extension magazine here. It comes with the 13 round extended magazine. And then if you look under the accessory deal, it will come with this base plate that actually makes it a 10 round uh, versus the 11 round with the pinky extension. Now I'm gonna go ahead and eject this and show that it is clear so that everybody on the internet won't freak out because I'm handling a gun. So. Uh, the gun itself is in nine millimeter. As mentioned, it comes with a 13 and an 11 round magazine. I'm gonna move this box out of the way so that it's a little bit easier for us to deal with here. Zoom in some so you can, ooh, wrong way, zoom in some so we can see a little bit better. So the gun itself is obviously a nine millimeter handgun. It has a billet machine slide. This one's FDE Cerakoted. The gun does come in black. It comes with and without frame safety as well. Now this is a slide catch, not a frame safety. Uh, the recoil system, I'll pull this apart in a minute, but the recoil system is a dual captive recoil spring with a full length guide rod. It weighs 18.3 ounces with the flush magazine and 18.6 with the extended magazine. This one happens to be an FDE and the frame is polymer uh, or, you know, some people might call it plastic. Um, the grip width itself is one inch wide. The length of the gun overall back to front is gonna be six inches and the barrel itself is a three inch hammer forged steel melanited barrel. So you can see that. Uh, the sights themselves are a tritium front sight. Uh, it's the big glowy front sight. So if I can kind of get it there. Uh, it's the big bright iridescent colored one. Uh, and in the back is this loop sight or U sight that they call a tactical rack U notch rear. Um, we talked about the magazines that it came with already, uh, but it comes with an 11 round and a 13 round with a little flush plate. Um, and then the height with a flush magazine is four inches and with the extended magazine top to bottom, it gets to four and a half. So let's kind of do a quick pull apart on the gun so you can see how that works. So as we get ready to pull this guy apart, you can see uh, that we have the slide stop here and then this is the disassembly lever. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the, the gun itself and open it up with locking it onto the slide stop. Now, Obviously, I don't think I have to repeat this, but make sure that the gun is not loaded because here pretty soon, you're gonna to have to pull the trigger. So we see that the gun's not loaded. You know, one little habit you can do is to stick your finger into the barrel. I know it sounds a little bit hokey, uh, but it does help you make sure that there's nothing in it. Now, this is kind of unusual in that the disassembly lever actually gets pushed up into this 12 o'clock position like this. That is unusual for a semi-auto most of the time they go down but whatever doesn't matter all right so now we're going to let the slide ride forward we're going to pull the trigger to take tension off of the striker and then we're going to pull it apart that is a fairly typical way to disassemble striker fired gun you can see this dual captive spring system here uh, that is for uh, you know the operation and recoil 
and then the barrel is going to come out and at that point the gun is effectively disassembled so what you're going to want to do if you want to take it down any further uh you know there's probably some videos about that or you might want to consult with a gunsmith or something similar uh i typically do not take mine down into pieces uh, any further than this unless it's just absolutely necessary. So what we're going to do here is we're going to return the barrel back into the gun itself or the slide rather not the gun itself and then we're going to put the springs back into there and you'll see that there's a little notch where it catches on the barrel and then we slide it back together. Like most semi-autos, you see that there's these guides here. Let me try to get those in the video a little better. There's some guides here, and then it just slides into the frame on those guides, and then we're going to pull it back again and lock it into place. We're gonna drop the disassembly lever down, and then we're gonna let the slide go. And then at that point, since we know it's not loaded, you can go ahead and pull the trigger. One thing that I did forget to mention is the trigger on this gun. It has a pretty nice trigger. A lot of these guns can sometimes get a little bit mushy, and this one itself is a nice, pretty much flat trigger, and it reaches a good break point, and then you pull it, and it's pretty solid. Also, another thing I neglected to mention is that this is a reversible magazine release, so that's all pretty cool. So the gun's pretty neat. We've taken a little peek at it. Let's just uh, run out and shoot it and see what it looks like. We're about seven yards out. These little guns like this are primarily defensive carry pistols. So uh, there's most engagements in a defensive situation are gonna be pretty close. The Texas Concealed Handgun License or License to Carry Program, they do at three yards and seven yards and 15 yards. So the seven yard is a good place to start uh, to try to deal with determining whether your gun's gonna be accurate or not or that kind of thing. I don't have a lot of practice with this gun. I have a, uh, a magazine of 115 grain Winchester full metal jacket in the 10 round magazine. And then I have another magazine of the, uh, this is gonna be American Eagle 124 grain. So we're gonna see if it likes one or the other. This is being filmed kind of during an ammo shortage. So I'm not gonna go crazy and try a bunch of different kinds of ammo. But we can at least get a feel between 115 and 124. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a round on target and then try to uh, kind of place the other rounds right on top of it. Given this thing has this little short barrel, uh, I'll discuss the specs in another part of the video or probably already have. Uh, but uh, this thing's probably at, you know, at most three inches long. And so you're only going to get so much accuracy typically out of a barrel that length. So let's see what happens. It does have a large green front sight, and so because of that, uh, it covers up sort of a fat spot. So we're gonna start with this. Okay, that hit real hard low into the left. I'm hoping that that's just me pulling. So we're gonna try again. See, that was a total miss. See, they're all stacking low and left on me, but they're climbing up, so maybe that's my jerk. Yeah, they're stacking pretty close there. I'm kind of aiming at that dark spot above them. Yeah, they're stacking pretty close in that one little spot. Again, this is the Winchester 115 grain, but you can kind of see that they're all living right there in the same area uh, in that one dark spot low and left so now granted i kind of stand in a hybrid weaver i have a problem i haven't really shot isosceles very well in the past so low and left can be an indicator of a weaver stand because you're kind of having to bring your head down to your arm plus i'm talking at the same time i'm shooting but you can see, I was kind of really aiming right here, but I managed to stack them all into this corner here, all on top of each other. So, I mean, that's a pretty good little group. Let's try the 124 grain. 
see what happens with that. I'm going to move on to, uh, I guess I'll move on to the target next to it. It is a little bit mangled up in the washer on the, um, it is a little bit mangled up in the washer that holds it in the upper right. So hopefully it doesn't break loose. The one next to it lost a, an ear on the target. So I need to replace that target. But so this is going to the 124 grain American Eagle is what we're running with this. And I'm gonna try to just kind of go like center mass on that big uh, IPSC or body shape target in the center. Yeah, that hit dead center mass. Like I said, it broke up on that right side. Let me move, uh, I'm gonna move to this four inch target here, uh, or actually it's a six inch. I'm gonna move to that on the left and try to just hit dead center. So that's pretty good. That one went low and left, but I think that that was my jerk. All right, I'm gonna start working these bottom targets just because that other one's spinning. So we're gonna go uh, bottom left. So that was a little bit lower into the left of where I was trying to get to. I'm gonna try to stack it right on top of that connector right there, see? That went low and left. That's me jerking for sure. It is a snappy little gun. I mean, anything this small is always going to be fairly snappy. Let me square up again. Let's move to the one next to it for fun. Um, kind of going center, dead center. So it's off to the left just a little. Off to the left just a little off the left just a little. So I can say that my shooting is pretty consistent because you can see how that thing is hitting um, off to the left a little bit like that. I don't think that I'm jerking that many times, but I might. That's just a simple sight adjustment thing. So I don't see that this is a problem with the gun. And since it landed right there again, wow, that went through 13 rounds pretty quickly. So you can see that again, I'm stacking them all in one little spot. So if this wasn't a test gun, I would probably bump my sights over a little bit to bring this thing over to the right. I will say though, that's pretty good performance on this little short barrel. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna load up this same ammo combination. I'm gonna move out a little bit uh, and we're going to go ahead and uh, run the, I just said the same ammo combination. We're gonna run that a little bit further out. I'm gonna step out to like 15 yards and usually I kind of make a mess out of it if I do that. So we'll see what happens at that distance. So I'm gonna start with this 124 grain American Eagle. Uh, I had another cut that I took and I really wasn't able to hit the broad side of a barn at 15 yards with it. So I assume that that was probably me, I don't know. So we reloaded another mag. We're gonna try it on the big target and see if I can pull it in. These are little guns and this thing is snappy, uh, just for a critique. I'm not trying to blame my shooting on that. I'm simply saying that uh, that's, a, that's a, a characteristic of this gun if you're gonna be buying it. Okay, that was closer. Now I'm gonna aim at that spot and see what happens. All right, there we go. Little bit off to the left. I don't know which one that landed on. It's either left or low. That's pretty close to where I was shooting at to the left. So I'm kind of shooting at that mass. That was a total miss. I need to slow down and pay attention. See those just slung off nowhere. Okay, so I think that we're still consistently. Running pretty left. I think it's fair to say so that's just the sights on this gun. This gun needs a little bit of adjustment. So that looks like the whole mag. So you can see it does hold it together. So that's pretty solid for a 15 yard difference on a defensive, or distance rather, on a defensive pistol. So I'm pretty happy with that. If I had to, you know, critique this gun's accuracy, I would say that it's accurate enough, 
but the issue is you really got to kind of slow down and take your time with it and you know in a defensive situation you're usually under pressure so if i were going to run this gun in particular i would probably say to practice a lot but uh it's snappy and it's reasonably uncomfortable um but it does shoot pretty well so that's kind of the you know the long and short of it so there you have it folks we did a little run-in of the hellcat it is a fairly decent shooter I don't know that it's the best shooting gun that I've ever run in my life, but it is a little short barreled gun. Um, you know, I mean, I was pretty happy with it. It is what it is. It's a small carry pistol. It's light. It's easy to get around. I'm not the biggest fan of the sight. Me personally, I prefer very tiny uh, night sights, something small. For me, that's easier to hit with. Now, some people are front sight people. They swear by these big fat green front sights and things like that. I think they're, they're the best thing that you can possibly have. So, you know, take it from me with a grain of salt. Uh, it's just about preferences. The gun does feel good in the hand. I have to say that. Uh, it, it feels good in the grip. The grip is a little bit larger than some of the other real compact guns. So that for me is a comfort factor and I found that enjoyable as well. This particular gun, I enjoyed the FDE color on it. Uh, and it's nice when it has a Cerakote finish because that's really going to hold up well. Of course, the black guns are going to be fine too. And then they have some variants that have slide cuts and they have um, places, you know, they have RMRs on them and that kind of thing. They even make a model that has a compensator and an RMR. So it's a pretty neat offering. It's probably my favorite offering from Springfield Armory as far as their polymer guns go. And you know, you can't really go wrong with it. It's a, it's a neat gun, it shoots good, and you'll probably be happy with it. So, you know, if you're thinking about getting one, maybe go run one in a range, compare it to some of the other compact guns and see what you think. Uh, otherwise, just pick one up. You'll probably be happy with it. As I always say, the gun community is a family. You guys be nice to each other. It really would help us out if you guys would smash the subscribe button, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Check out our website. You know how it is. Everybody asks you to follow them online. We'll do that for us too if you don't mind. But uh, so we've covered the Hellcat pretty good. You know, check it out. Like I said, you may like it. And until next time, y'all take it easy.